Welcome to this video on animal cell structure. I wanted to start out by letting you see the parameters of the page and you can print out my blank drawing from my website if you'd like. It's science at sciencewithsusanna.com. Okay, so now I'm gonna zoom in just a bit as we get started. So what I want to start off with is to remind you that an animal cell, this means that it is a eukaryote and let's see. Okay, sorry, I had to move my paper a bit. So if we think about all of the things in the world that are alive, we can basically put them into uh, groups um, that typically are called kingdoms. The classification of living things is always changing though. It's kind of frustrating actually. But basically when you find something that's alive, it could be an animal and that's what this kind of a cell is going to be. It could be a plant in which case it would have um, something called chloroplasts in it that make it green or those kinds of shades. And that means that it can make its own food. It could be a fungus, in which case it would still have all of um, these structures for the most part. Um, it could be a protist. Oh, and I should tell you, so a fungus would be like a yeast. If you've ever heard of yeast infections or um, like toenail fungus or things like that. Or... Um, or a mushroom even. And then a protist would be um, if you've taken a general biology class where you look at something called a euglena or a paramecium, those are examples of protists. So they're one-celled organisms. But anyway, all of these are considered eukaryotes. So that word eu, this is Greek. for, why didn't it freeze it for me? Okay, so this is Greek for true nucleus. So karyo means nucleus and you means true. So when you see this, then it means all of these living things will have um, a nucleus and which we'll talk about right here it's where the dna is and it has a membrane around it see and it will have a bunch of other important organelles that we'll talk about like endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus mitochondria etc so you can see this is most the kinds of things that you either have as a pet or maybe you're interested in or living things that you've seen right the only thing that would not be considered a eukaryote that you find that's alive is bacteria and these are prokaryotes and this word pro can mean first or before or something like that so basically they do not have a nu nucleus they also don't have uh, Golgi or ER uh, the endoplasmic reticulum they, they lack a lot of the structures we're going to talk about in this cell but when you are going through pre-nursing classes, most of the time you're going to be looking at what you would consider an animal cell because we're talking mostly about humans. You should know that plants have something called chloroplasts and we'll talk about that. And then when you take a class called microbiology, that's when you learn a lot about prokaryotic structure. Okay, so without further ado, let's um, start with a blue pen. We'll go over here and I'm gonna start with the nucleus. And I'm going to use a blue highlighter to put a membrane around it. So this is one of the things that makes eukaryotes um, cool is that they have this membrane bound nucleus and then inside of it they have their DNA. So I'm going to use a blue pen to label this as the nucleus. And the nucleus, it looks like an A, doesn't it? It contains the DNA. And these are um, the pieces of DNA in this particular animal cell. Do you see how they have like pieces of DNA? Each one of these is a piece of DNA. Now in your human cells, you have 46 pieces like this. And of course, for my little drawing, I just made six pieces. And each one of these pieces you would call a chromosome. So the DNA is made of what you would call linear chromosomes. So chromosomes are the way that the DNA is organized inside of these cells. 
And then each one of these chromosomes has genes on it. So you might have, you know, a hundred genes or something on this piece of um, DNA that is a chromosome. So chromosomes have little like studded, they're studded with, with genes. And in your human cells, you have about 20,000 genes. Okay, so the other thing you're going to need to know about the nucleus, so it contains the DNA, and the DNA codes for um, protein. So a process called transcription will make mRNA, which I have here, and the mRNA can then go through a ribosome to make protein. So the process of transcription is making mRNA, which is a little messenger from a gene. So one of these genes can get like opened up and copied a little bit and then make a little piece of mRNA, which we'll talk about in a second. So that's important about the nucleus. So it contains the DNA, which codes for protein. And this process called transcription happens in the nucleus when you make a little um, copy of one of these DNA pieces that's no, and a little piece is called a gene. Okay, so then right here, this is the nucleolus. So it contains the DNA. And the nucleus also contains the nucleolus. That's the structure right here. And that literally means little nucleus, because when they first found it, they didn't know what it did. And the nucleolus is where most of the um, RNA in the cell is made. Okay. So, um, and also the uh, ribosomes. And we'll talk about ribosomes in a second. They, they're going to translate an mRNA into a protein. So then next we have the, if a little gene gets transcribed and we'll use um, purple next. So then you're gonna have these little pieces of nucleic acid information that are out into the cytoplasm of the cell, which is all of this area out here. Everything basically that is not inside of the nucleus or another organelle is just the cytoplasm. And that mRNA is able to go through a structure called a ribosome to get translated and made into protein. And the protein is what does all the jobs for the cell. So you've got here, these are mRNA. It stands for messenger RNA and it's made uh, from a DNA template, which is the on uh, the genes, and what's special about it is it's single stranded. See how these are double stranded, and it can go into the cytoplasm. And what that really means is it can leave the nucleus. Okay, so so far we've talked about structure number one is the nucleus that contains the DNA. DNA has little pieces on it called um, genes, and the genes code for um, the making of a protein. So the first thing that has to be done is it's like, oh, okay, we want to make this protein, so let's make a little copy of this piece of the nucleic acid, and then that piece is called mRNA, and it gets to leave, um, and that's through the process of transcription. So this transcription made makes mRNA, and that we drew that with just like a little purple squiggly. And then it's going to go through the ribosome. I'm gonna use pink for this. So the ribosome does a process called translation. So it translates mRNA into 
a protein. And in order to do that, it uses amino acids that are loose in the cell. So we could do, like, imagine that there are amino acids. So as the ribosome reads the mRNA, it puts together these amino acids to form a protein. So now we have a protein, and then this could do a bunch of different things in a cell. So maybe a protein could be a channel to let things in or out of a cell. So like I have a picture over here, like maybe this would be a completed protein and it allows things to go in and out of the cell. Or maybe it's um, identification to help identify a cell and tell nearby cells, hey, I'm a liver cell, I'm a kidney cell, I'm a red blood cell. And that might be done by putting the protein, so this would be another protein like on the surface of the cell, and then it can act as an identifier for that cell. Or maybe it is an enzyme that is going to break down um, foods, some of the foods that you eat. So it might, the enzyme might get secreted out of the cell and then help you to digest the carbohydrates or the fats or the proteins in your meal. And yeah, protein in your food is the same as this kind of protein. It's just in a, um, it has to be broken down in your digestive system into amino acids and brought into the blood. And then another example of what a hormone, or sorry, what a protein might do, maybe it's a hormone like insulin, for example, and then that hormone, which is a protein, could get secreted out of the cell and go do a job somewhere for you. So sometimes proteins need to be folded in really special ways and they need to have modifications done to them. So what I'm going to do next is show you that this structure over here, which is called the ER, sometimes has ribosomes all over it. And look, I drew one here for you. And then we call it the rough ER because when they look at it under a microscope, they see lots of little dots on it and these dots are ribosomes. So, so you see this ribosome I made for you here and now I'm just making them a little bit smaller, but I did show you one there. If you grab your purple highlighter, you can remind yourself that there's a piece of mRNA, so that's gonna eventually become a protein. And then we could use red here because that's what we did for this protein. So then it gets translated and you get a protein inside of this rough ER and it gets transported. So it got folded and transported and then it will get secreted and sent off to another organelle. And we're gonna talk about the next one, the Golgi in a second, but let's go ahead and um, label the rough ER. We'll just use a black pen for this. And this is uh, the rough endo. Endo means inside. Plasmic means inside the cytoplasm. So it's because it's within the cell. The rough endoplasmic reticulum. And reticulum means like a, a network. Sometimes it's even used as like a, another name for a purse. So sometimes we just call it the RER or the rough ER. And its job is to fold these proteins properly. They have to be folded just right to be able to do their job and then transport them. So the rough ER's job is to fold and transport protein. Now notice over here, I'll use yellow. Notice over here we have, a looks kind of like the ER, right? But this is called the smooth ER because it doesn't have those ribosomes on it. And what the smooth ER will typically be doing is make lipids, like phospholipids for the cell. Those are fats or oils either. So it makes lipids for the cell and very involved with um, synaptic vesicles, which are made of lipids um, in neurons that can transport. So that would be an example of something you might learn later in the class about how 
or in your pre-nursing classes, how neurons work and that synaptic vesicles, they're made in these. So these could extend all the way down to the end of an axon, for example. And then here is an, a picture of um, a synaptic vesicle here. So, or sorry, a vesicle, not synaptic. So this, whenever we have like a little fat sac, that's what I always think of it as. It's going to carefully carry that protein to the Golgi, which is the next structure. And we'll use orange for this one. So sometimes it's called the Golgi apparatus, sometimes it's called the Golgi body. And what it does is it modifies proteins and ships them out. Sometimes we use the word secretes. So right here, this vesicle containing this newly formed protein would then it would pop through and as the protein moves through these like they look like sheets of pancakes don't they as it moves through the golgi it will get modified and then it comes out the other side so here's the same protein we've been talking about that got made way starting with the idea from the dna and then let's use um some um green to show that this has had gotten some modification maybe it got a sugar added to it Maybe it got a lipid added to it. So it um, usually adds lipids or sugars. We usually we use the word glyco at the beginning if um, there's a sugar been added. Okay, so I've gone pretty long already in this, so we'll call this part one, and I'll come back and finish it with uh, animal cell structure part two.